parameter. So with a hamstring bias RDL, you want only a small amount of knee bend. You don't want you don't want locked knees because then you're going to feel the stretch behind your knees in those tendons. You want a soft knee, but it's not going to have a great to be a great degree of bend throughout the rep. Okay, you're still going to have the same translation of your hips backwards. So when you do an RDL, you're thinking you're always thinking not bend over, but butt back, butt back, butt back, like somebody's pulling you back here. And therefore, as, it, as your butt gets pulled back, this is how you end up descending, and then you feel the weight shift to your heels, right? But in a hamstring RDL, you're going to keep your knees a little bit straighter, still push back. In a glute bias RDL, you're going to have more knee bend, and you'll know it, because this is a stretch-based movement where you train both hamstrings and glutes in the lengthened position. So on a hamstring-based RDL, you will feel a stretch in the belly of the hamstring. On a glute bias RDL, you will feel a stretch in that lower part of the glute and still top of hamstring. So here's what it looks like. I have a trap bar here as well because um, your best bar option for RDLs is going to be a trap bar because your hands are at the side. Second to that, obviously, would be dumbbells because you can also hold dumbbells at the side. Some gyms have uh, deadlift machines. Our commercial gym has one, so you can use this grip. This is never gonna be your optimal grip with a straight bar. So anyways, I'll just stand in my trap bar. <clears throat> so I have a mirror here just to make sure I have enough differentiation for you. If I'm doing this movement myself, I know to search for a glute stretch. I know to search for a hamstring stretch, and therefore I can adjust myself in my rep or in subsequent reps to tweak my form a bit to get it back to where I want. Right? But for the sake of showing the visual, I'm gonna to try to, to um, make it a bit more obvious. So I would assume that I would have a, an implement right here, a trap bar or whatever, and then I'm still, I'm still having this, right? This shift back that I'm having. I do not wanna have this overarched spine. You wanna have a neutral spine, which means your stomach is braced, right? As I'm shifting down my legs, I have very poor hamstring flexibility, so I don't get a lot of range of motion. But right here, with load, I would have more, more range, but this is my RDL right here. And you can see my butt's pushed back, and now I'm driving forward, right? So my knees are soft, maybe five degrees, they stay there, they stay there, and then I drive forward. That's a hamstring bias RDL. With a glute bias RDL, and I felt a big stretch in the belly there. In a glute bias RDL, I'm gonna have more knee bend. Okay, so I have my implements in my hands or using a trap bar or whatever I'm using. And then as I'm going down, see I have more, I'm still going butt back, but you see I have more squat in this. And right here, now I have a stretch here. Okay, on the first one, when I was doing it like this, I don't have a stretch here at all. My stretch is all in my hamstring belly. Now with a, with a simple shift of actually allowing my knees to drop in this, and I'm not thinking of a certain amount of knee drop. I'm moving my body to get a feeling or to put my hamstrings or my glutes in their lengthened stretch position. So I'm pushing myself, and I know that I have to squat a little bit to do that. I'm pushing myself into that range of motion, and right here is my glute stretch. And then I drive up, okay? so. Glute versus hamstring bias for me and deadlifts.